Here we're going to look at an interesting trigonometric identity, which I think originally comes from a popular science magazine for like high school and middle school students, but I couldn't find the exact reference. So if anyone can find the exact reference, you can uh, tell me in the comments. Okay, and so our goal is to find a nice closed form for 1 over cosine squared 20 degrees plus 1 over cosine squared 40 degrees plus 1 over cosine squared 60 degrees plus 1 over cosine squared 80 degrees. And we're going to use these two tools which we will prove. And the first one says that if alpha 1 all the way up to alpha n are roots of this polynomial p of x, which is a0 plus a1x all the way up to a n x. So that's a list of all of the roots counting multiplicities, so some of them are repeated if necessary. Then the sum of the square of the reciprocals of the roots is equal to this object. So we get minus a1 over a0 squared minus 2 a2 over a0. And then our second tool will be this one down here, and that says that if you sum from k equals 0 to n of 1 over k squared evaluated at pi times k over n, you get n squared. So this is a really nice general result in itself, and we'll see that our goal is a special case of this. And in fact, this first tool will be used directly to prove this second one, so that be nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the proof of this first goal. So first of all, let's notice that we can take this p of x, and since we know something about all of the roots, we can factor it. So alpha 1 through alpha n are roots, and notice a sub n is the leading coefficient, so we can factor that a sub n out, and we'll get x minus alpha 1 all the way up to x minus alpha n. Now let's think about what happens if we were to multiply that out. So notice that the leading term would be a n x to the n, and then we'll have minus a sub n, the sum alpha 1 all the way up to alpha n times x to the n minus 1. Let's just talk our way through that really quick. So this comes from multiplying all of this out. So notice this a sub n term is going to show up in all of the parts. And then getting this x to the n minus 1 term means when we take this product of all of these binomials, we are choosing n minus 1 x's and 1 alpha i. But we do that n times, and so the n minus 1 x's will give us this x to the n minus 1, and then the 1 alpha i will give us this sum. Okay, great. So now, let's go ahead and look at the last couple of terms. So notice the next to last term, which will still have an a sub n attached to it. So that's what we get if we choose n minus 1 alphas and then 1x. So we could write that in the following way. So we're going to have minus 1 to the n minus 1 because we've chosen n minus 1 alphas and those are all attached to a minus sign. And then we'll have the sum k equals 1 to n of the product alpha 1 up to alpha k up to alpha n. But I'm going to put a hat over the alpha k. So that means we remove this one. Great. And then this is attached to x. All right, so let's talk our way through that again really quick. So we take this product of n minus 1 alphas. So notice there are n different ways to do that depending on which one we leave out. And then a single x. So that'll give us the sum over all of those possible ways to leave one of the alphas out. And so that's what we get here. Okay, fantastic. And now let's see the very, very last term. So that's going to be another a sub n because that's all of them. And then we'll have minus 1 to the n. But here we're taking the product of all of the alphas. So that'll just be alpha 1 times alpha 2 all the way up to alpha n. But in terms of our original polynomial, we know exactly what the names of these things are. So this guy right here is equal to a sub 1 because notice that a sub 1 is attached to x and then this guy right here is equal to a sub 0 because a sub 0 is our constant term. So now let's notice that we can put that together. So minus a sub 1 over a sub 0. 
So notice that's going to cancel out all of the minus signs because we have a minus 1 to the n minus 1 over minus 1 to the n. That's going to give us a minus sign, but we include another one, which is going to cancel out. Now our a n over a n cancels, and then we're going to be left with this. So we'll have the sum k equals 1 to n of this removal, alpha 1 up to alpha k, removing alpha k all the way up to alpha n over this product, alpha 1 to alpha n. But notice we have a, a product of n minus 1 things on the top and n things on the bottom. So everything is going to cancel except an alpha k in the denominator. And that's because alpha k is the only thing that's not in the numerator. So that gives us this nice formula, uh, minus a1 over a0 equals the sum k equals 1 to n of 1 over alpha k. And this is going to be uh, an important formula to start with. Okay, so I'll move that to the top and then we'll continue on. So far we have this identity which is interesting in itself that says if we take the sum of the reciprocals of the roots of a polynomial, we get minus a1 over a0. In other words, we get minus the coefficient of x divided by the constant term. Fantastic. Now we want to do something similar, but we want to look at the coefficient of x squared instead of the constant term and the coefficient of the x. So let's kind of see how that goes. So using the same kind of idea that we just did, extracting the coefficient of x squared. So again, being inspired by what we just did, we will notice that that is minus 1 to the n minus 2. So let's talk about why that's the case. That's because we are choosing two x's and we're choosing n minus 2 alphas, but each of those is attached to a minus sign. Fantastic. And then we have an a n, which is still right there. And now we're going to have this funky double sum because notice there are two ways to remove these alphas. And so the best way to do this is the following way. So we'll take the sum as i is bigger than or equal to 1, which is strictly less than j, which is less than or equal to n. Great. And then we'll have alpha 1 all the way up to alpha i. We're going to remove that all the way up to alpha j. We're going to remove that all the way up to alpha n. So I'll let you guys think about that carefully, but it's really important to do this way because we don't want to double count things. Notice if we did not have this inequality relation, we would double count the ways that we're doing this product. Furthermore, i is not allowed to be equal to j because that would be like choosing one of these twice, which again we know is not possible. Okay, fantastic. Now the next thing that we want to do is notice that the coefficient of x squared is exactly equal to a2, kind of by the definition of our polynomial. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is look at this quotient a2 over a0 and see what we get. So a2 over a0, let's recall what a0 was real quick. So a0 was equal to a sub n minus 1 to the n, and then the product alpha 1 up to alpha n. So notice that minus 1 to the n and minus 1 to the n minus 2 have the same parity in the exponent. So if we divide those, those will just cancel down to 1. Also notice that a sub n and a sub n cancels, and that's going to leave us with this sum over 1, which is less than or equal to i, which is less than j, which is less than or equal to n. And then we have alpha 1 all the way up to alpha i, which has been removed all the way up to alpha j, which has been removed, all the way up to alpha n, over this big product, alpha 1 to alpha n. Now we'll use the same thing that we did on the previous board and use the fact that this on top is a product of n minus 2 terms. This downstairs is a product of n terms. We know exactly what's missing here. So this will cancel down to 1, and this will cancel down to whatever was missing on top. So we get this product alpha i, alpha j in the denominator. And that's going to give us the sum 1 is less than or equal to i, which is strictly less than j, which is less than or equal to n of 1 over alpha i, alpha j. Now this, along with our uh, previous calculation, will allow us to get this goal over here. So let's go ahead and clean up the board and we'll do that.
Now what we'll do is start with the right hand side of this identity and show that using these two preparatory results we will achieve the left hand side of the identity. So in other words we want to take minus a1 over a0 squared and subtract twice a2 minus a0. So that's going to give us the sum k equals 1 to n 1 over alpha k. We're going to have to square that sum and then we'll subtract twice and now we have a double sum here the sum i bigger than or equal to 1 less than j less than or equal to n of 1 over alpha i alpha j but in order to square this sum we need something called the Cauchy product formula so let's recall that real quick Okay, so we've got this product of the sum k equals 1 to n of a k times k equals 1 to n of b k. So that's going to be this double sum, the sum i equals 1 to n of the sum j equals 1 to i of a j times b i minus j. So let's go ahead and see what that does to our squared series here. So that's going to give us the sum i equals 1 to n of the sum j equals 1 to i of 1 over alpha j times alpha i minus j. Great. Now we can just go ahead and bring this one down. So we have the sum sum 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n of um, 1 over alpha i alpha j. Now we're in a good spot. I'll erase this formula because we don't need it anymore and then we'll simplify this. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to split this double sum into three different pieces and I, the three different pieces are going to be as follows. So we'll have j equals i minus j. In other words the indices here are exactly the same. Or we have j is less than i minus j. Or finally, j is bigger than i minus j. Great. So now let's see what we get for each of those. So in the case that we get j is equal to i minus j, that's going to give us a single sum over the reciprocal of the squares of these roots. So in other words, that'll give us k equals 1 to n of 1 over alpha k squared. Great. And then notice in each of these cases, because we're going to sum over the same set of alphas just in a different order, we will achieve the same sum. And the, the sum that we and the sum that we will achieve in each of these cases is exactly equal to this guy over here. Which notice this has a coefficient of negative 2 in front of it. So that means that these two cases add up and cancel with this over here. Which tells us that we have our result looking at the extreme right and left hand side of the equation. Okay good. So we have established this formula and now we're going to move on to the second one, starting with Euler's formula. So notice, we notice that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. But now notice that that tells us that if we take cosine theta plus i sine theta and raise it to the nth power, that's the same thing as taking e to the i theta to the nth power, which by exponent rules, that's e to the i m theta. And then again, by this formula with just substitution, that's cosine m theta plus i sine m theta. Fantastic. Now the next thing that we can do is expand this as a binomial. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can expand this in the following way. We'll have the sum k equals 0 to m of m choose k. And now we'll have i to the k uh, cosine to the m minus k theta and then sine to the k theta. Great. So that's what we get just from expanding this. Uh, fantastic, and that's going to be equal to cosine m theta plus i sine m theta. So both of our formulas have to do with cosine. So now what we'll do now is extract the real part of both sides of the equation. So here we'll do real part. So now taking the real part of the left hand side means we're going to be taking the k values that are even because we want this to be like negative 1 or positive 1. So now I'm just going to write that as the sum k equals 0 to m over k even first. And then this will be m choose k, i to the k, we'll simplify that later, cosine m minus k theta. 
sine to the k theta. And then taking the real part of the right-hand side gives us cosine m theta. Now I'm going to go ahead and re-index this thing. I'll send k to 2k. And that's going to give us the sum k equals 0 to the floor of m over 2. So I'll let you guys think about that, but that's actually pretty easy to see. Then we have m choose 2k, and now we're going to have minus 1 to the k, because we have i to the 2k, but that's going to be i squared to the k. And then cosine of m minus 2k, and now we're going to have sine of 2k, but that's the same thing as sine squared of k. In other words, 1 minus cosine squared theta to the k. Great. And now this is all going to be equal to cosine m theta. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Notice I can take this minus 1 to the k and multiply it in there, and that will remove this if we reverse the order to cosine squared theta minus 1. Great. I'm going to move this to the top, and then we're going to give it a name. On the last board, we derived the following identity. Cosine m theta is the sum k equals 0 to the floor of m over 2. m choose 2k, cosine to the m minus 2k of theta, and then cosine squared minus 1 to the kth power. So that's a mouthful. But that's often called t sub m evaluated at cosine theta, where that is the mth Chebyshev polynomial. So these are well known, and they actually have a lot of interesting properties in their own right. Right, including satisfying some nice recursions and stuff. Maybe we'll look at that in a future video. Let me know if you want to see that down in the comments. Now I want to apply this in order to get to our goal. So notice now we've got some sort of polynomial. Maybe we can find the roots of some sort of polynomial and then apply this in order to get this second goal. That's exactly what we're going to do. All right, so now let's go ahead and set m equal to 2n in order to line up with our final goal, and we want to set theta equal to pi k over n. And this is actually kind of done with an arbitrary k, but the interesting k's we're going to look at are k all the way up to 2n minus 1. So notice there are 2n choices for k here. All right, fantastic. So now what I'll do is I'll insert this value of theta into this equation using this value of m. So notice that's going to make m times theta equal to 2 pi k. So we have cosine of 2 times pi times k, but we know that that's equal to 1 because cosine has a period of 2 pi. That's pretty easy to see, but that is also equal to t sub 2n evaluated at cosine of um, pi k over n. Great. Where again, t sub 2k is this polynomial defined by this object up here. Great. But now what we can see is that if we uh, define this polynomial, maybe we'll call it p sub 2n of x, which is t sub 2n of x minus 1, then p sub 2n evaluated at cosine of pi k over n is equal to t sub 2n evaluated at cosine pi k over n, which is equal to 1 minus 1. In other words, it's equal to 0. So maybe that's fact number 1. And this is true for all k between 0 and 2n minus 1. In other words, we have found 2n roots, roots of p sub 2n of x. And then another thing to notice is that p sub 2n of x is of degree 2n. And that's actually like pretty easy to check by uh, our construction of this polynomial up here. So what that tells us is we have all of the roots. So we have all of the roots of this polynomial p sub 2n of x. Great. So now we're going to use that fact along with this in order to get this formula over here. So let's clean up the board and we'll bring that up.
Okay, using our Chebyshev polynomial, we define this new polynomial p sub 2 n of x, which was t sub 2 n of x minus 1, and it had these 2 n roots given by cosine evaluated at pi k over n. Okay, fantastic. But the next thing that we want to notice is that that tells us immediately that the sum of the reciprocal of the squares of those roots is equal to this kind of object over here where a1, a0, and a2 are coefficients of this polynomial p. So let's go ahead and write that out. So we have the sum k equals 0 to 2n minus 1 of 1 over cosine pi k over n squared. So we're summing the reciprocal of the squares of the roots. So that's going to be equal to minus a1 over a0 squared minus 2 a2 over a0. And I should point out here that this a0, a1, and a2 are such that we have the following, p sub 2n of x equals a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus dot dot dot. So now the first thing to notice is that um, a0 will be equal to p sub 2n um, evaluated at 0. But now that's going to be equal to t sub 2n um, evaluated at 0 minus 1 because of how our p sub 2n has been defined. But since we know how these act on some trig functions, we know that that's equal to t sub 2n evaluated at cosine of pi over 2 minus 1. Again, because cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. Now applying this formula here, we know that this is going to be equal to cosine of, let's see, we're going to multiply this by m, but in this case m is equal to 2n, so we're going to get uh, 2n times pi minus 1. But now, since we assumed at the very beginning that n is odd, which will cover our goal case up here, then that means that this value of cosine is negative 1, and so that gives us negative 2 in this case. So let's just go ahead and point that out. This a sub 0 is equal to negative 2. Now we can really quickly calculate a sub 1, and a sub 1 is 0 in this case, and that's actually really, really easy to see because this is an even polynomial. So I'll let you guys check that this is an even polynomial, which means all of the odd powers of x have a coefficient of 0. Great. So we have a sub 1 is equal to 0. So now we just need to calculate a sub 2. I'll clean this up and then we'll do that. Now we're going to go ahead and calculate a sub 2. So notice it's pretty easy to see that a sub 2 is 1 half p sub 2 n double prime evaluated at 0. Just that's an easy way of extracting a coefficient. And that's exactly what we'll do here. So that's going to be equal to 1 half um, and then t sub 2 n evaluated at 0 minus 1 and then the second derivative of that. Because the derivative of a constant is 0, that just gives us 1 half t sub 2 n double prime evaluated at 0. So now we need to calculate t sub 2 n evaluated at 0, and we'll use like a similar trick to what we did before with this value of cosine. Now in order to easily calculate this, we'll use this fact that t sub 2 n of cosine theta is equal to cosine 2 n theta, and that will allow us to write this as 1 half, the second derivative with respect to theta of t t sub 2n of cosine theta evaluated at theta equals pi over 2. Okay, now using this formula up here, we can simplify this. So this is going to be 1 half the second derivative with respect to theta of cosine 2n theta. Then we're going to take the whole thing and evaluate it at theta equals pi over 2. Now let's go ahead and take the second derivative of that. So we'll take the derivative of the derivative. So the first derivative is going to be, we'll have a 1 half, the derivative with respect to theta, and now we're going to have minus 2n sine 2n theta by the chain rule. And then again, we're going to evaluate this whole thing at theta equals 
pi halves at the end. Now taking a derivative, we have the following, so we're going to have one half, then we need to take the second derivative, we're going to get another 2n out of there, but we won't get a minus sign in this case. We'll have 4n squared, derivative of sine is cosine, so we have cosine 2n theta. Now we need to evaluate this whole thing at theta equals pi over 2. Since n is odd, that was our original assumption, we know that cosine of odd theta is negative 1. So this is negative 1. That minus is going to cancel this minus. And then this 4 is going to cancel down to a 2 with that. So we're left with 2n squared. Great. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring this 2n squared up here, and then we're close. So we just saw that the sum k equals 0 to 2n minus 1 of 1 over cosine squared pi k over n is 2n squared. Now what I want to do is I want to separate this into two parts. So I'm going to separate this into the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of 1 over cosine squared pi k over n plus the sum k equals n to 2n minus 1 of 1 over cosine squared pi k over n. So we know that that's equal to the original, which means we know that that is equal to uh, 2n squared. Great. Now the next thing that I want to do is re-index this thing. So I'll re-index this thing by replacing k with k plus n. So I'm sending k to k plus n. And so notice that's going to change this into the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 because now notice our starting point will be k equals 0. 0 plus n is n, which was our old starting point, and then we'll have inside the sum 1 over cosine squared of pi k plus n over n. But the next thing to notice is that this thing right here is cosine squared pi k over n plus pi, but then by some trig identities we know that this object is exactly the same as this object. In fact, they're only the same because we square them, otherwise they'd be the same up to a minus sign. So in other words, we can combine these two sums together and we'll have twice this sum equals 2n squared, which means this sum right here is equal to n squared, which is exactly what we needed. So now we're done with this. And now we're ready to do our main result, which is cosine squared 20 degrees plus cosine squared 40 degrees plus cosine squared 60 degrees plus cosine squared 80 degrees equals something. So let's see what that something is. So maybe the first thing that I want to notice is that 20 degrees is the same thing as 180. 80 degrees divided by 9. In other words, it's pi over 9 radians. So that's the way we're going to look at that in order to apply this result. Great. So now notice that we can write this as 1 over cosine squared uh, pi over 9 plus 1 over cosine squared 2 pi over 9 plus 1 over 1 over cosine squared 3 pi over 9, and then finally plus 1 over cosine squared 4 pi over 9. Great. Now I want to use that formula that I used at the very end to have some simplification, and I want to add to this some more stuff. So I'm going to add to this 1 over cosine squared 8 pi over 9. And so that's going to be exactly the same as this. So just to reiterate, this object and this object are the same. Again, from that identity that I used just before. And then here I'm going to add 1 over cosine squared 7 pi over 9. So this and this are the same from before as well. And then plus 1 over cosine squared 6 pi over 9. And then finally plus 1 over cosine squared 5 pi over 9. So it may seem like I've totally changed the sum, but notice I've just added the sum to itself because we have cosine squared pi over 9 is the same thing as cosine squared 8 pi over 9, cosine squared 2 pi over 9 is the same thing as cosine squared 7 pi over 9, and so on and so forth. So I've added my goal sum to itself. In other words, I've doubled 
doubled it. So now I can multiply this whole thing by a half and I haven't changed anything at all. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to rewrite this as one half and now I have the sum k equals one to eight of one over cosine squared of um, k pi over nine. And so notice the k equals one term is here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. But that's almost exactly this thing right here. What we are lacking is the zeroth term. So let's go ahead and add the zeroth term in here. So we'll add one over cosine squared, um, zero pi over nine in, into this. But that means we need to subtract that as well. But we'll subtract that in the form of the number one because we know cosine of zero is one. Now the next thing that I want to do is take this and insert it into the sum. And notice that's going to give me half, and now I have the sum k equals zero to nine of one over cosine squared k pi over nine, and then I have minus one. That's outside of the sum. Now I can apply this result with n equals nine, and notice here I get one half, nine squared is 81 minus one, so I have one half of 80, so I have 40. So now looking at the extreme left, and right hand side of the equation, I see that my final result is the sum of the reciprocal of those squares is equal to 40. And that finishes this video.